In this edition of In the Trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics, our special guest, Solomon Wilcox. So is that something that is, is that a, a big buzz, that topic? Is is that a buzz at the Combine Week? Or what, what kind of things have you heard as main topics of uh, conversation so far at Combine Week in Indy for you, Sully? It's, it's about, it's about, it, it's not just about hiring of minority coaches. This, I think there's some, we need to understand the nuance of, of what's happening, okay? It's like, it's hiring coaches, period, but hiring them in a way that's going to empower them to be good leaders. Mm-hmm. If, you're, if you're just hiring a guy to be a proxy for the general manager and the owner, but he's head coach in name only, Dave, that doesn't help our game. And and players can see through that right away. Yep. You know, and so now what kind of product are you going to get on the field? These are some of the things that are being talked about in the halls of, you know, the convention center in downtown Indianapolis here at the scouting combine. These are some things that a lot of people are talking about and really good football people, you know, to be a general manager in this league, there's a longstanding process of got to be a good talent evaluator, right? You got to be a guy who could on the pro side and on the college side, you and I both know those are two different things. There's a sure. pro personnel side, there's a college uh, draft and develop kind of side, and those two sides work together. You had to have come up on one side or the other, right? And now we have people coming in and can't be all numeric. I'm not against data analytics, but you got to have, you know, you got to have touched the flesh, man. You got to have <laughs> understand players are Hi. not just numerical. Um, you know, spreadsheets, they're human beings. And that's why we were so blessed to have a player like Joe Burrow, because if you just went with a stat sheet, um, there's no numerical data is going to talk to you about his competitiveness, about his, his, his talent from the neck up. He's a bright young man. He's a mature young man. His personality breeds others to follow him. His leadership is off the chart, but you can't find that on a spreadsheet. Right. right. So you guys like him and Tom Brady will fall through the cracks if that's your only tool for it or metric for measuring the talent of a player. But you have to put the years in. You've got to put the work in, right, to be able to understand all those things we just talked about, to be able to uncover talent and to develop that kind of talent. And so um, we need to make sure that we're taking care of our game by rewarding the people by merit. The people who worked to get here, right? Who have done, who've made all the right steps. We can't keep moving the target. Yeah. If you do this, you get to be a head coach. Oh, now we're going to move it. If you right. know this person or the son of this person or the grandson, we're going to keep moving the target. <laughs> you know, and so I, I think there's fundamentals that hold true. And it's okay if you say this is, these are the steps you need to take to get to where you need to go. And someone does those things and have proven and demonstrated that they put the work in and they've been successful as a result of it, they should inherit the kingdom, right? They should, they should get to sit in that seat or maybe deserve an opportunity. And I believe those, op- those opportunities will come to those people who continue to work hard and, and remain faithful to the process. Now we, we both know Solly that, uh, you know, money's the, the biggest thing that talks and creates. There's no question about it. The guys have to feel like they're going to get paid. But uh, the fact that Joe Burrow, Right after the Bengals drafted him, DJ Reader's like, huh, I, I saw him playing college. This guy I think is going to be pretty darn good. DJ Reader decides, you know, Cincinnati's a good destination. And then he has that rookie year where, you know, he's injured after 10 games, but he shows some promise. So now Hendrickson's like, you know, I, I like this Joe Burrow, you know. Now Joe Burrow, <laughs> after taking him to the Super Bowl, the Bengals are going to be on a lot of players, really good player, free agent players, a short list, you know, of – one, two, three teams or whatever. How big a deal is that? Huge deal. I mean, I'm already hearing that um, here around Indy, guys. We're starting to talk about free agency. I'm being told, you know, Ryan Jensen, the center uh, yep. from the uh, t- from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, that Alex right. Kappa, 
right? The another the guard with the, they all want to come play with Joe Burrow yep. because you know what? Rob Gronkowski's already said it. If there's one guy I'm gonna play with, I'm playing with that guy. I watched yep. him play, uh, and you know it's not it's it's about the performance on game days. There's no doubt, but it's how he goes about it. Players recognize the real deal, Dave. You know this. Players can't. You can't fool players. They they can see right through a fraud. Yep. They can see right through showmanship. They can see right through if you're a me guy and not a team guy. They can see right through that. And they don't want to play with me guys. They don't want to play with guys when the losses start to mount. That guy is pointing. They want to play with the quarterback. It's like, look, put it all on me. You know, but they're the servant leader type. They recognize it because they just had that in Tom Brady. Tom puts everyone else first, mm. right? Because he knows that to play quarterback in the NFL, you need the help of everyone in the building. You need is you need everybody's help in order to look good on Sunday and to do your job and and bring home W's. So he's willing to help everyone else. Now I've talked to some of the younger receivers on the team, not just the frontline starters of Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, even the younger guys. They're like, no, this guy takes the time. He will help you to become a better player. He'll come to say, hey, what can I do for you? Do you need to stay out of practice? We can work on some things. What can I do for you to help you to become a better player? Because before it's all said and done, we're going to need you. I mean, this is coming from other young players that are down the line. And that's the kind of player Tom Brady was. I, I see a lot of those same traits in Joe Burrow. Couldn't agree with you more. So all that you've done, and it's, it's only middle of the week here, at uh, at the combine but who's been what's been your most interesting conversation that you've had either on air or off air at the combine so far solid that you can talk about yeah you know we were i'm gotta tell you i was blown away because we talked with them just today and that's matt Carell, the quarterback at ole miss um and you know he kind of just talked about the fact that you know that hey he said look we won some games we went about winning games because we're a better team. It's not that we were better than anybody else. So, and he, you know, he plays in the SEC. So I could, under your plan against Georgia, your plan against Alabama, your plan against LSU. And right. here's little old Miss. And he talks about the fact that they won games because they built the locker room and built a culture that they knew they were going to be going up against teams that are more talented, that if they had any shot of winning, they were going to have to play together, stick together and play hard with one another. And he talked about, um, winning over a locker room and going to every single guy and asking, hey, what can what do you need? He said, people do not care about what it is that you could do until you could do something for them. <laughs> he said, when you invest in other people, they'll invest in you, that it's reciprocal. It wasn't rehearsed, Dave. It wasn't like he came in with this canned speech. Right. You could tell it was just organic for him. It was quite natural. Um, and I, it was just, it felt relieving to hear a young guy. And we talked to some of the other quarterbacks, but we didn't, we didn't hear that same chat. It was quite unique. It's rather rare. And, uh, tell you right now, he, he began to win us over <laughs> and that's, you know, at that quarterback position there to, I think it's a pure sign of, of leadership that someone can't just talk to you about it. You have to have lived it. And he kind of talked about his older brothers and his dad and how he kind of he's the youngest of three and I'm the youngest of four. So I know. And he just talked about, the you know, how his dad made him stick with everything he ever started, how his brothers yeah. were hard on him all the time. And, you know, that kind of pressure. Now, I'm telling you, it shapes diamonds it really does. No doubt. No doubt. Is there any player or players that uh, you keep hearing this name cropping up, you know, and he's kind of like. Oh boy, he's getting a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of buzz already. He's maybe climbing draft boards, or is it too early for that? It is too early because they they yet to take to the field indoor or at least on the field um, workouts begin tomorrow on Thursday, yeah. uh, and then we get to get our first look at them today. It was just a chance for them to meet the media. They're going to be doing their physicals a little bit uh, later this afternoon, um, and you know, doing the wonder lick tests and. Right. So there's all that kind of orientation. You know, I have been talking with some coaches about this wonder lick test and, you know, cause you know, everybody has, they're all over the board about it, but it's quite unanimous that at the quarterback position is vitally important and there's no coincidence. Okay. Like guys like Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, 
Drew Brees, okay, Philip Rivers, um, and more recently, Joe Burrow, um, Justin Herbert. These guys are all scoring in the 30 to 35 range and higher uh, on that Wonderlick test. The quarterbacks who, who can play consistently well and process, you know how much information goes into a game plan. The quarterback has to know it as well as the coaches, right, and be able to check in, in and out of moments and in games to get their offense in the most favorable play. Um, that doesn't come without brain power. And we talk about it. It's from the neck up. That's maybe the talent um, that's most important, particularly at the quarterback position. And we don't really like to talk a lot about wonder lick tests because if somebody doesn't do well on it, we don't want to brand them, right? right. Um, but I do think we ought to give credit and just at least recognize for the guys who are playing well on Sunday at the quarterback position. Because I think you could get away with maybe not doing well there if you played some other positions. But at the quarterback positions, it's been synonymous. You go back and look at the guys who are consistent week in and week out, the Russell Wilsons, right, the Aaron Rodgers, and performing very well at a high level at the quarterback position in the NFL. And then you go back and take a look at those scores. You could see they're co very comparable. And not in one case is there an outlier. <laughs> it doesn't happen by accident, Dave. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> So I guess as far as the Bengals are concerned, again, having that that great season uh, of 2021, making it all the way to the, to the last game, the final minute and a half of the last football game, what's your advice uh, in the early stages of offseason here? What's your advice? Okay, here's, here's what I would recommend that you think about doing the early phases of preparation for the 2022 season, what would you tell players that just played in Super Bowl 56? Um, don't hang on, just like if you want it, don't hang on to the win too long because the work that needs to be done, done is very critical. And you got to get back to work. And I would say don't hang on to this loss too long. Let it, let it, you got to feel it. Yep. You got to let it drive and motivate you to never have to experience it again. And you should know, that every team's going to be gunning for you. They're gunning for you because the people in Kansas City, as I sit here, even at the Super Bowl, all the press media members from Kansas City, they're angry. I mean, they are. They feel like the Cincinnati Bengals robbed them of something that was almost organic. Right. Okay, that, that it was theirs. And I think we should learn from that. They have a quarterback that's that talented where the Chiefs, some way, in some weird way, think that they are, they should be playing in the Super Bowl every year because they have Patrick Mahomes. And that's why I caution Bengals fans because we have this special player at the quarterback position. It takes work to get there. Yep. It takes a lot of work to even have a shot. And so that we cannot take that for granted, that we have this expectation of playing in the Super Bowl every year because number nine is under center. And so that the other players – should not to say, hey, we got Joe, we're going to be okay. No, you've got to work your tail off to make sure you take care of this quarterback. Your job should be whatever it is we could do for Joe Burrow. What? How can we help him help us win? How can we make it easier for him to do his job? Everyone should be really thinking about that more than anything else. And then you know he's going to put in his work, right? But it's not just because you have him that you're going to have an opportunity to win championships. It's because you're going to bust your butt off to work as hard as you possibly can to make it as easy for him to do his job as you possibly can. That only gives you a shot, right? That only gets you in the tournament. And it only gives you a shot to be playing for potential championships. Let me get you out of here on this one, Stolly, and appreciate you carving all the time you're carving for us because you're – you're you're a working man, I'll tell you that, man. You're, you're <laughs> at that you. combine cranking, baby, and yeah. uh, and that's what makes you so great at what you do. You, nobody works harder. Nobody puts more time and effort into what they do and and to perfect their craft than Solomon Wilcox. I can tell you that. Um, defensively, in the playoffs, eight interceptions in four playoff games. I mean, you know that that's that's pretty darn strong. If you're if you're looking at the defensive football team as a former great player in the back end of the safety position like yourself, yeah, what what do you think? I mean, what what how do they take another step? How do they even get better? 
continuity is one thing, right? And I believe in continuity. I think it allows you to build upon what we call a foundational structure that's already here. And that means keeping Jesse Bates. Um, he's part of it. The guy, I think he proved it. Um, yep. He made critical plays at critical moments. The team's not playing in the Super Bowl without Jesse Bates. He gets right. into the big game, turns the tide, keep them out of the end zone just before halftime to make sure we're only trailing by three and not by 10. Um, those are critical plays. And so any when you get a player out of nose for the ball can turn it over, man, that's 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 a guy who's earning his keep. Now I think we do need to uh, leverage uh, the money that we're going to have under the salary cap to get better at the cornerback position. Not only can we draft there, but I think we can sign players. Um, there's a guy by the name of James Bradbury, if he's available. And uh, if the Giants, um, you know, aren't going to pick him up or going to, if he's going to be a cap casualty and uh, Lou Anaromo go gets us another New York Giant because B.J. Hill was a steal for us. Yep. Bradbury would be the next. And the reason why I target him, because I, I think Stefan Gilmore is also going to be available after leaving the Carolina Panthers. He's going to be an unrestricted free agent. But uh, James Bradbury, he's got length. Um, he plays really good in zone concepts. He plays really good as a press man-to-man -man defender. And uh, that's going to be required to play in Luana Romo's defense. Top down, we can't give up big plays. Once we begin to play top down and not allow them to throw the ball over our heads, we could beat anybody. We could beat Kansas City twice in one month. Yep. And uh, that's so we need to continue to build on that. But for me, it starts with the secondary. I do think we can add another pass rusher. Another die, and we can get those in the draft. There's going to be plenty in this year's draft. So, uh, but corners, I think when it comes to offensive line and corners, we're going to have to go free agency and the draft um, because we need not just one player; we need multiples. Yeah, and 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 edge. It's it's almost like uh, offensive line. They drafted three of them last year: second round, fourth round, sixth round. They draft Osine. They draft Hubert. Uh, in, in Osai now, the kid from Texas, he looks like he, he in that first game, preseason game against Tampa Bay, against the number ones, he, he ate him up and sacking Brady, pressuring, and then he goes down. <clears throat> you know, and Hubert didn't even make it out of the weight room. He hurt, hurt himself in a bench press uh, exercise. So, you know, you're right. I mean, if they can, if Osai can step up and give him another dimension on the edge and they give another one in free agency of the draft, I mean, man. That's 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 where it's at, and then on the back end as well. I I'm excited about what they've uh, what they've got, the young players they have that they can develop and continue to develop, and, and any additions they can make. You got to strike while the iron's hot, and the iron's hot when Joe Burrow's on his rookie contract. <laughs> that's right. You could go out and spin to to keep players around them and put those guys around. Them. There's no doubt about it. And you know they've been very aggressive in, in going out. They we've had some some misses, but. Yep. But that didn't deter us right after signing heading into 2020. That didn't deter us. We went into 2021 and did it again. And yep. that's what you and I both know now. That's that was that's quite impressive. No uh, doubt. For, for the Bengals. And I'm I'm glad they did. You know, Chidobia Wuze, um, Trey Hendrickson, Mike Hilton, just to name a few. Those guys were phenomenal. Um, and we need to we need to be able to hit on more in the same fashion. No question, Solly. Well, I'll tell you what, you're you're a credit to the National Football League and you're a credit to the Cincinnati Bengals in the city of Cincinnati. Solomon Wilcox, certainly do appreciate your time and your expertise as always, my man. You're the best, Dave. Keep up the good work. Who day? Go Bengals, baby. <laughs> Who day, Solly? You're the best. All right. All right. Take care. At First Star Logistics, we're a very strict company that really puts the pressure on our employees. <laughs> Brakes? What are those? That's what I'm talking about, Icky. Get the body right, then the mind's right. You yeah, know, you know, you gotta get that body right. That's sir. right. Yes, sir. Become a star with a chance to earn the highest commission percentages in the industry as a freight broker agent. Check out FirstStarLogistics.com.